Hey guys, Abner Miranda here. Recently someone asked me if I would do a cleaning video for you guys on how to clean handguns and I thought, well, doesn't everybody know how to do that? And then I reminded myself that there are certain things that are not common knowledge. So um, I'm going to show you guys what I do. Um, the, the cleaning regimen that I have is, is few and far between, I'm going to be honest with you. I used to be really strict about maintaining um, my handguns and I'm really not anymore because of their Glocks. Now that doesn't mean that I let them get completely gujued up but it means that I do work with them. I'll probably do four or five range sessions before I'll get around to cleaning them and I normally shoot twice a week. So um, the first thing that I do and I, I, and I generally mean this, the first thing that I do before I start cleaning guns is I make sure that there's no ammo in the gun or around the gun. It's not as simple as taking these mags and just putting them on the bookshelf. You, you want these out of the room and here's why. It's just as easy to reach back and grab a mag when you're function testing or when you think you're done and say a friend comes over and you start jawjacking with your buddy and before you realize it you pick up a gun and you rack it not thinking, not just, you, you do something that was unplanned and you'll end up feeding a live round to that weapon. Okay, the ammo's out of the room. I'm going to begin with my Glock 17. They're all Glock 17s actually, but I'm going to begin with my favorite Glock 17. Uh, this is a Glock 17 that I did in conjunction with Doug Presson, and it used to look a lot prettier than it looks now. Um, it's got a lot of mileage on it. The first thing that I do when I start cleaning guns is I decide which gun I'm going to clean first and then I set the others aside. The reason for that is you don't want to be taking apart multiple guns at the same time. You want to keep components to one gun um, separated and, uh, and specific to that gun. Oh, the other thing is, uh, this is the dining table and the, the first thing actually you need to do is make sure that there is no, no, uh, that there's no food on this table, specifically salt. Even little grains of salt, if they get inside your gun, you're just going to start down the road of, of uh, the metal being galled. Luckily, Glocks are pretty resistant to this kind of thing, but you don't want to cause any issues if you can avoid it, so clean the table off. All right, the first thing that I do is, once again, verify that the gun is empty. Take it apart. And this is as far as I go. If I, if, if the gun is really nasty and this one isn't, isn't too terrible, then I go a little bit further, but um, a gun that's got a few hundred rounds on it like this one is not going to be so bad that, that, you know, that it's going to be like horrible, so it's not that big a deal. You know, the thing that I do is I wear gloves, wear nitrile gloves because there's a lot of junk inside these guns that is very toxic. And, if you shoot a lot like I do, you can end up increasing your lead count in your blood and that has some severe deleterious effects over time. So consider wearing gloves just starting now. All right, um, I have a very simple cleaning regimen. Where is my Glock tool? You know what? I'm not gonna use a Glock tool today. I'm gonna use an AR-15 firing pin. I'll show you what that's, what that's about in a minute. Okay, these are the tools that are needed for cleaning a Glock. I use the old school bore snake. If you have to do any detailed taking apart, you can actually use the firing pin from an AR-15 and it works just fine. Uh, and if I, remember, if I remember correctly, the original design idea was that if a soldier in the field did not have a tool, they always had a tool which was this because the standard stenag firing pin would work to service every single component of a glock um, you could use it for scraping for cleaning surfaces uh, for getting down on the uh, you know on the feed ramp um, taking those little chunks of carbon out and then of course every single component on the glock can be servi serviced with that tiny little tip right there First thing I do is verify that I don't really have a lot of junk in the Glock. I have an old toothbrush. And for this, uh, and what you can't tell, but there's 
or I'll show you on the palm. See how it leaves a little bit of oil behind on my palm? That, believe it or not, is about all the oil you need to do all the cleaning that you've got to do on the inside of your Glock. That's really all I do. Then I lube this area here and I pull the trigger forward. I lube the connector, just a little smear of oil there. You want to create, you want to um, push forward here on the safety plunger. Uh, the, uh, you know, it's been so many years since I did Glock Armor School, I can't even remember what everything is called, but basically the trigger bar connector, push forward. You don't want to pull back on your trigger because you can actually hurt the drop safety trigger. So pull forward and just cycle back and forth and you're trying to deposit the oil down your connector, down into the body. So just work that a few times. And um, honestly guys, maybe just a little bit of oil back here. And that's pretty much it. That's actually done. I do not take my slides apart because unless they unless they're like really really filthy and nasty and this one is not as you can tell I mean this this is not terrible at all uh, unless they're really really bad I don't take the stuff apart I used to I used to be an absolute clean freak as my daughter over here will attest right Emily mm -hmm. yeah all right this portion I lube inside the rails here and here and that's all, in fact, that, honestly, that's more than I need in a little bit right here. And a little bit on the plunger. Then I clean the spring and lube it. All right, the barrel, I don't know if the camera will pick it up or not, but sometimes the barrel gets some deposit buildups here and here. They're not that big a deal. You can get them off with the firing pin quite easily by just scratching at them but they're not that big a deal. Glocks are designed to continue shooting when they get beyond filthy, so it's just not that crucial. I've got a friend um, that owns a very prominent training school that tells me, man, I don't even clean my guns. I just basically keep dumping oil onto them. I've, I've not, he's, he's not the first person to tell me that, so take that for what it is. A couple of passes forward and backward with your boar snake and you're done. And a little bit of oil here because you can tell by the, the shiny nature of that that this hops up and down inside of your slide so that right there is constantly under load so you want to keep that lubed up also on the inside too right there all right that folks is actually it reassemble Point in a safe direction, my daughter is that way, so I'm pointing that way. Once again, verify that the gun is empty, and I absolutely know that it's empty. Why? Because there's no ammo in this room at all. There's no way that ammunition has gotten into this gun. So, function test. Keep holding your trigger. Reset. Oh, uh, like butter. Guys, when you put thousands of rounds through a gun, it turns it into absolute butter. It is, I mean, this, this gun, to some of you, looks like trash. This gun is thousands upon thousands of rounds. In fact, you can measure the rounds through this gun by the cases rather than rounds. It's got all kinds of scars from being rolled on, uh, on gravel, getting dropped all the time, um, but it keeps running. Uh, for your, if you're dealing with a, uh, a pistol light, before you start training, you can do what I just did there and wipe oil onto it. Even if you're doing low light training where you've got to be using your light, um, it doesn't impede the beam of the light to such a degree that it makes it difficult to see the beam. But at the end of the class, like if this were if this were gray, you could literally go like that and it would just come right off. So you can then buff this off. Please don't be one of those people who goes, oh yeah, I just use metal polish and I take it right off. Well, guess what? If you take it right off, you've actually removed the anti-reflective coating that is on the glass of most um, top-end pistol lights. So don't be that guy. All right, that gun is done. I'm gonna show you real quick on the GS-17. If you have a thread protector and you're dealing, and you're dealing with 
and you're dealing with cleaning the thing, what I would say to you is if you have a, this is about as far as you've got to take this apart to get at the barrel. You can pass your bore snake through this without any problems. That thread protector on the GS17 is actually Loctited in place. I don't want this coming loose during firing. They will begin to walk out on you and then you're going to end up in trouble. First of all, you might lose it. Secondly, you might hit it as it begins to fly off. In flight, you could catch it with a round and cause damage to yourself or somebody else beside you. Or even have a piece come back and clip your optic. And you can see the very edges of my optic here where it has caught pieces of windshields there along the metal rim there. It's got pieces of windshields flying inside of cars. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and the lens itself has also caught damage from all that stuff flying around the car. So, I'm telling this to you from experience. <clears throat> excuse me. You can damage your firearm um, from, uh, from stuff flying around in the air, so you want to minimize that. So, lock tight your ring in place, and when you go to clean your barrel, push it up that far. You can pass your bore snake through. You can deal with the surfaces that need cleaning. There's not much else you have to do. When you go to do your breech face, all you have to do is just hold it by the barrel and you can access the breech face. All right guys, that's it. Um, there's not much else. There's nothing different to this Glock, to a Glock 19, to a, a full size versus a compact or anything. The cleaning procedure is always the same. And you'll notice that it was a very fast cleaning procedure and you end up with a gun that's ready. It's serviced, it's ready to get back to work. You don't have to do a lot of meticulous cleaning. Take this from someone who used to detail strip every single Glock every single time. I'm talking frame and slide. My daughter's over there nodding her head. Because this was, cleaning was a big deal. Oh, last thing I'll leave you with is this. If your frame does get to the point where it's so nasty that you have to, that you have to blast it out, same with your slide, do yourself a favor and invest in brake cleaner. The cheapest stuff you can find at Walmart, just non-chlorinated brake cleaner, which I think pretty much all aerosol brake cleaner is non-chlorinated now. Put the straw on it, blast all the junk out of the gun, and then give it a spritz of oil, set it aside. Same with the slide, blast everything out, give it a spritz of oil and rock on. You don't have to detail strip. Remember, if you're not an armorer and you detail strip a Glock, you've just voided its warranty. Um, so, I don't take these things apart anymore. All I have to do is lube them a little bit externally if I, if I have to deal with anything and they're just guys with their Glocks. They can take it. So um, that's what I got for you guys today. And always, I thank you guys for watching. God bless you all. Get those guns out and practice. Have a good one. You are making a racket in the kitchen. I didn't bring up the food processor. You're welcome.